Hey everybody, this is another FreeCAD Path tutorial video, and in this video I'm going to run through the basics of the holding tag dress-up. Um, holding tags are a fairly simple and common operation in CAD, and uh, let's just jump in and I'll show you how they work. So, uh, what are they? First of all, if you've got a part that's a piece of wood or something in your router that's clamped down and you're going to uh, CNC the features and then cut it out, you know, you do the initial features and then do the profile or the contour cut to remove it from the material. But at the very end of that contour cut, the part is, is free and isn't clamped in and, and uh, so it can break loose and kind of dive into the cutter, uh, destroying the part or throwing it off the machine. Um, and that can, can be dangerous or could break cutters or can uh, um, certainly ruin the part. Uh, so in order to avoid that problem, what we often do is uh, uh, add these additional tags, these little holding tabs, sometimes called tabs, sometimes called tags, depending on the application you run. Uh, in FreeCAD we call them tags. Um, but they're just uh, little pieces where we, we pull back on the cutter and leave a little material to keep the part in place. Um, and this can work either for, uh, you know, like I say, to keep it from breaking loose during the cut, but you also may want, especially with like laser cut wood parts, to leave all the parts intact in the sheet and ship the, the sheet to the final user who breaks them loose from that, a uh, way of keeping parts organized. I've seen uh, commercial products done that way. Um, either way, the, uh, the remaining material that's left is uh, is small enough that it's easily removed and, and uh, filed off uh, to kind of clean it up. So I'm going to jump into FreeCAD and show you how we do that here. The uh, um, What I've got is a part, uh, kind of a typical motor mount, and maybe I've got a, a boring operation for the center feature, and then I'm cutting some slots. Uh, so my last thing would be a contour to cut it out, and I'll just... Uh, add the contour operation and it is uh, fine just the way that it is. I'm not going to mess with any of the settings here so I'll close that. Then I'm going to go down and select the operation and just like we've done in, in previous videos apply the dress up operation. In this case it's the holding tags dress up. It'll take just a second and you can see that the path has been modified. I'll kind of highlight it here and see if that shows up a little bit better. The uh, um, the what what you're seeing is that is the path coming down and then the, the uh, cutter jumping up, going over and and uh, continuing, and it's automatically the dress up is automatically added four in this case one on each side. Um, it does have a uh, uh, editing panel which I'll open up and show you some of the features here. The, uh, uh, the first thing is uh, there are settings for the width, which is the overall width of the tag, the, uh, uh, the height from the base cut, uh, the angle of this uh, slope, and the radius, uh, um, how it blends the top edge. The, uh, in most cases, for wood or metal, something like 45 degrees is probably fine. If you were laser cutting, you almost certainly want to set this at 90 um, and to give a square cut. Um, although you can do that with uh, other kinds of cutters as well. The, uh, uh, in this case, for a laser cut, this wouldn't be appropriate because we'd be, still be burning on the top, uh, which would be burning through. Uh, you'd want to increase the tag height to at least the full height of the material. Like that. Okay, the uh, um, people who use holding tags uh, typically use them a lot and use them the same way because they tend to be cutting the same kinds of material over and over again. So uh, if you go into Path Preferences, you'll see that there's a new tab here for dress ups and you can actually set the default values that will be used every time you create a holding tag dress up. Um, that's just a convenience function, makes it pretty easy. Um, let's see, the, uh, uh, there's a pick list that shows the tags that are here now and there's these little green balls that are inserted at each location and if you uh, select one of these they'll change colors so you can see which one you're working on. They can be individually, ena individually enabled and disabled 
um, and you can reduce the number that's auto-generated. So if I didn't want four on this part, I just want two. I'll just replace all and you'll see it left the two. Uh, you don't get direct control over which ones are there, but uh, that's the way that it works. Now one thing to keep in mind is um, I'm going to go ahead and set this back to 45 degrees and uh, set my height back. Oh, oh that'll work. Um, it, it's it, tempting when you're looking at the back plot of this to assume that this is the shape of your resulting tag uh, and that is not exactly true because remember that these green lines indicate the path that the cutter is traveling down and since our cutter has a diameter and it's cylindrical the actual tag that's left here is going to be narrower than this triangle and uh, um, and uh, and if it's got a rounded top on it, it's going to be a uh, sharper peak than what you actually see so it might take a little bit of uh, playing around to find the uh, uh, shape of the tag that works for you that leaves enough material to hold the parts securely in place but is easy enough to remove at the end. Um, the last thing I wanted to show was you can individually add tags. Uh, there's often a desire to position them strategically so they're either easier to remove at the end or uh, easier to conceal the spot where the, the uh, tag material was filed or cut away. Uh, and you do that with a, the uh, add dialog. It'll give a little pick uh, tool and you can pick a location and it'll insert the tag right there. And then it just appears in the list like any other. Anyway, that is about it for holding tags. Um, they're really useful, and, uh, and the dialogue is, uh, um, is just very intuitive and easy to use. I want to give a shout-out to uh, Marcus Lampert, who did the work on this. He did an awesome job. So if you know him or see him, you know, like give him a big bear hug or manly high-five or fist bump, something. But... Uh, Thanks, Marcus. Awesome job on this. Uh, um, oh, by the way, this is not in version 0 0.16. If you're running that, uh, you really should upgrade. Uh, 17 is not released. It is a development branch, but there are many cool features there. That's it. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, put them on the video below or comment on the free CAD forum. Uh, I'm anxious to hear what you think. Thanks.